Greetings to the best bright side detectives. Have you prepared your magnifying glasses? Then let's start. Yeah. A man was trapped in a dark room. His only source of light was a candle. There were three doors leading out of the room. Behind one of them, there was a tunnel that could help him escape. Behind the other two doors, there was a concrete wall. The man had a key that could uh -oh. open any of the doors, but he could only use it once. Still, the man managed to get away. How did he do this? He brought the candle to each of the keyholes in turn. Near the door with the tunnel, the flame started to flicker. Imagine that you're stuck on the top floor of a 30-story building and there are no stairs you could take. Your only option is to use an elevator. There are four elevators in front of you, but the first one is swarming with extremely venomous spiders. In the second elevator, ah, look, there's no elevator. You can only see an empty shaft. The third elevator is filled with toxic liquid. As for the fourth elevator, a furious hungry tiger is inside. Uh -oh. It seems like a no-win situation, but you have to find a way out. Which elevator? You should choose elevator number three. As soon as the doors of this elevator open, all the liquid will pour out. And the only thing you'll need to do is to step far away enough not to have your shoes soaked. Now let's check how attentive you are. Yeah. Try to figure out which rabbit doesn't have a twin. A small hint, pay attention to the matching patterns on their ears, bellies, and cute little faces. Yep, that's the one we're looking for. Unlike others, it has darker spots around its nose and on its ears. And here's a bunch of kitties with their tails sticking up. A perfect hiding spot for a little bunny. Can you find it? This white rabbit is hiding literally in plain sight. Damien has bought a new keyboard, but apparently the seller fooled the guy and gave him a fake one. Can you find the proof? The keyboard has no fives, but there are two fours. Someone hid a soccer ball in this crowd of happy pandas. Can you spot it? Right, here it is, so easy to miss. A dog has run away from its master. It's now hiding somewhere among all these bulls. Can you help the worried owner find his pooch? Right, here it is, similar but not the same. Look at these two ladies. Which one seems suspicious? It's the woman on the right. Her reflection is all wrong. She's probably not human. All these people seem to be taking a shower, but which one is doing something wrong? The guy on the left, he probably just pretends to be taking a shower, but the water isn't running. Look at these people dancing at a costume party attentively. You need to figure out who is a werewolf. It's that guy in the corner. He's wearing a human mask, but his thick hair is peeking from underneath the mask. All of these people look well off, wearing some jewelry and nice outfits, but only one of them is indeed rich. Mm. 
It's that guy in a t-shirt. While he's focusing on his work, his bodyguards are waiting for him. Look at how attentively they're watching him and their surroundings. Which of these girls relaxing near the swimming pool is married? This girl doesn't have a ring, but she's wearing it on another finger. The second girl doesn't have a ring whatsoever. It's the third girl that's married. She must have taken her ring off before going for a swim, even though she isn't wearing it. There's a visible tan line on her ring finger. In one magic country, all animals are intelligent and rational. In one clearing, there are 10 lions and a sheep. Your task is to watch them and make sure the lions don't harm the sheep. If you get distracted, a lion can eat a sheep. But what the lions don't know is that if one of them does this, it will turn into a sheep too. In this case, the rest of the lions will probably eat it as well. If you leave this lovely company alone for some time, how many lions and sheep will you find when you come back? When you return, most likely, there will be nine lions and one sheep. The main thing here is that all the animals are rational. Once the lion eats the sheep and turns into a sheep itself, the rest of the lions will understand the consequences and prefer to stay in the safety of their natural form. Oliver got a present for his girlfriend, Victoria. It was a new smartphone she'd wanted for ages, yes. but Oliver didn't give it to her right away. Instead, he put it into a box. Victoria had uh -oh. to figure out in which of these three boxes the gadget was. Each box had a note. It's in here. Your present isn't here. It's not in the first box. Only one of these notes told the truth. Where is the smartphone? If it's in the first box, it'll mean that claims 1 and 2 are correct, which contradicts the conditions of the riddle. If the phone is in the third box, then both claims 2 and 3 will be true. But if the device is in the second box, note number 3 will be the only truthful statement. Mr. Smart's wife went missing. A detective came to investigate this case. Mr. Smart told her the following. The last time I saw my wife was in the morning. She was having breakfast. When I returned home at 6 p.m., her breakfast was still on the table, but she had disappeared. After hearing the man's story, the detective immediately arrested Mr. Smart. Why did she do so? When the detective arrived at the Smart's house, the breakfast on the table was still steaming. This means that Mr. Smart had set up the scene right before he called the police. Once Mr. Blue, Mr. Red, and Mr. White meet for dinner. When they take off their jackets, Mr. Blue draws their attention to the fact that each of them is wearing a shirt different from their surname. The man in a white shirt looks surprised and says, Yeah, Mr. Blue, you're right. Can you figure out which shirt each man is wearing? So, let's think logically. Mr. Blue can be wearing only a white or red shirt. But we know for sure that another man is dressed in white. This means that Mr. Blue can only be in a red shirt. Mr. White could be dressed in a blue or red shirt, but the red one is already taken by Mr. Blue. So we can logically conclude that Mr. White is wearing blue. And, as a result, this leaves us with Mr. Red dressed in a white shirt. Liza was a popular guitar player in a rock band. On Friday, the band was going to have a big gig. Liza's bandmates were waiting for her, but the girl was very late. Eventually, she showed up, but it wasn't Liza. It was her twin sister, Alice. She was envious of Liza, so she locked her sister in the room, took her clothes and the guitar, and pretended to be a band member. But as soon as the musicians saw fake Liza, they immediately knew she wasn't their bandmate. How did they understand?
Look how long the girl's nails are. You need to have short nails to play the guitar. A man came to a fruit market to sell watermelons. After he sold half of them and half of a watermelon, he saw he had one watermelon left. How many watermelons did he bring to the market? He came there with three watermelons. Megan here is a popular blogger from New York. Hello! Today, she's meeting her bestie, Rosie, in her favorite cafe. Hello! They're both on a diet, so they only order herbal tea and a piece of chocolate cheesecake to share. <laughs> Megan and Rosie have a great time together and post some food pictures. But an hour later, Rosie faints. Doctors reveal that she was poisoned. Let's take a look at Megan's post. Can you figure out where the poison was? Rosie put sugar in her tea, and Megan didn't. So the poison was in the sugar packet. After taking care of Rosie, Megan's finally headed home. The door in her apartment building has a combination lock. And someone has recently changed the four-digit password. Luckily, Megan finds a hint nearby. Can you help her figure out the new code? Multiply the first and last number. Then multiply the second and the third number. And the code is 2516. Megan goes up to her apartment. There's a stunning sunset going on out the window. She takes two pictures for her Instagram. Can you find five differences between them? Ready to see the differences? Here they are! Megan decides to eat some snacks and watch the videos of her favorite bloggers. Mm. One of these two ladies is a millionaire, while the other one is broke. Oh. Can you guess who is who? The second lady is broke. Can you see the Eiffel Tower and Big Ben in the background? She can't be in Paris and in London at the same time, can she? So her photo is fake, as well as her fancy lifestyle. Megan gets some cheesy comments from one of her subscribers, what? Evil Eye. But she doesn't take it seriously. She spends a great night with her friends. Late at night, Megan is walking back home alone. Suddenly, Evil Eye appears right in front of her. He grabs Megan and puts her into the trunk of his car. Megan faints. After a while, she wakes up in a basement and sees her fan drawing some sort of a flower on the floor. He says, Two letters are missing here. Guess which ones and I'll set you free. If you don't, you'll stay here forever. Can you help Megan out? The missing letters are M and E. Megan returns home and discovers that someone has stolen her laptop. Well, this just isn't her day, is it? She calls the police, and they interrogate three neighbors. Holly says, I was cleaning my apartment with loud music playing, so I didn't hear anything suspicious. Paul said, I was walking my dog for the last two hours. We just returned home. Everything looked as usual. And Alex said, I spent the whole day at home. I only went out once, about an hour ago, to take out my trash. I noticed a strange guy in a hoodie at your door, but he left very quickly. Who's lying? Alex. He said he had taken out the trash. But take a look at his trash can. It's still full. The next day, Megan gets good news from the police. They caught Evil Eye, and he's in jail now. Oh, yes. He insists that the officer should give this note to Megan, but she has no clue what this means. What about you?
Ready to see the solution? The note literally says, jailbreak at 11 a.m. Yay! Megan's favorite blogger has just posted a What I Ate in a Day video. Oh, yes. See if you can spot anything odd here. Wow, she keeps a saw in the fridge. Here's the next video. Can you spot any mistakes? Yep, this rainbow is fake. Today is Megan's 30th birthday. She's been preparing for a party for weeks. She bought a beautiful dress, cooked plenty of food, and decorated the apartment. A lot of friends are invited, including Megan's boyfriend, Jeff. Before the event, he calls Megan, saying, I'm in the office right now, but I promise to be at your place at 8 o'clock. Jeff comes home at 8.05. He brings flowers, a birthday cake, and a diamond necklace. But Megan is really mad. She throws the flowers into his face and bursts into tears. Why? Megan was expecting him to arrive at 8 p.m., but he came at 8 a.m. the next morning. Mm. In the evening, Megan decides to go buy some ice cream. She walks towards her favorite corner store on the block. Mm. Megan meets the owner of this store, Ted, on the street. A uh, mass man has just robbed the store and took all the cash. Oh Megan explores the space and the broken shelves. Then she says, I don't think it was just an ordinary robbery. The thief must be your enemy. Oh, really? How did she know? Take a closer look at the floor. The salt packages have been torn. Also, the thief opened the bottles so that the oil would leak out on the floor. Hmm. Why would an ordinary thief waste time opening the bottles? Therefore, they had an intention to cause as much damage as possible. Megan takes Ted out for coffee to cheer him up. The waiter brings them two identical servings. Well, almost identical. Mm. Can you spot three differences between them? Here they are. Megan gets an invitation to a fancy party for bloggers. Only those who can crack this maze will actually find a way in. Can you help Megan reach the party? She should choose the third route. Megan reaches the final destination. There are three doors, all covered with graffiti. Hmm. Can you help her guess where the party is taking place? Let's take a closer look at the lettering on the doors. If we replace each letter with the previous one in the alphabet, we'll get party, toilet, and exit. Therefore, Megan should enter the first door. Security guards at the party got a report. Several criminals are planning to get in. That's why they scan everyone's bags very carefully. They find three suspicious people and arrest them. But one of them is innocent. Can you guess who? The second lady carries too many phones in her bag, a couple of smartphones, and one old-fashioned button phone. As for the third guy, why would a bald man need shampoo at a party? It seems only the first lady isn't a criminal. Megan enters the party and goes to the bathroom to refresh her makeup. There, she meets three pretty ladies. Two of them are vampires. Can you tell who's not? This lady who's standing next to Megan is a human because she has a reflection. Therefore, the two others are vampires. Megan wants to rent a cozy cabin to spend a weekend in the woods. 
She's looking through a special app and finds four available options, but only one of them is safe enough. Can you help Megan make the right decision? The second house looks pretty cozy, but there's a creepy clown hiding behind the tree. And the price is suspiciously low. According to the info box, the third house was built 9 centuries ago, but it looks pretty modern, so it's probably a scam. The fourth house is chic and high-tech, but the window glass is covered with cracks, which is not safe at all. So Megan should choose the first cabin. Finally, it's the weekend. Megan hits the road to go to the cabin. On the way, she makes a stop to visit the local farmer's market. Mm. Megan picks some lemons. She wants to pay, but her phone is gone. She interrogates three people standing nearby. Kim says, I didn't touch your phone. I was too busy selling my tomatoes. Magnus says, I was taking pictures of my shop for social media. See for yourself if you don't believe me. And Bianca says, I think it was Kim. Her business has not been going well recently. After hearing what they had to say, Megan knows for sure who's the thief. What about you? Check out Magnus's basket with vegetables. He hid Megan's phone among the carrots. Uh Megan orders a beverage at the local coffee shop and looks around. One of the customers is not human. Can you figure out who? The waitress. Her eyes are blinking red. Hmm, maybe she didn't get a tip. It's the finale of the Big Money Buzz Show, and Natalie is faced with a difficult task. There are three fish bowls, each of them containing a different amount of gold bars inside. If she manages to put her hand inside one of the bowls and take it out, she can keep the gold bar. The first bowl has scalding hot water inside of it. The second is filled with flesh-burning acid. And the last bowl has a couple of venomous scorpions walking around. Which bowl should she choose? Natalie should just wait until the water cools down and grab the gold bar from the first bowl. Bob was blindfolded and put into a shaky van. When he woke up, he was alone in a dark, empty room. There was nobody there, but there were three envelopes on the floor. A post-it on top of the envelope said, Each envelope contains a red capsule and two statements. In one of these envelopes, both statements are false. In another envelope, both statements are true. You have to choose the correct capsule to get out of this alive. He opened the first envelope, saw a capsule and the messages. 1. Don't take this pill. 2. Take the pill from the second envelope. On the second envelope, the note said, 1. Don't take the pill from the first envelope. 2. Take the pill from the third envelope. And the last envelope said, 1. Don't take this pill. 2. Take the pill from the first envelope. Well, which capsule should Bob take? He should trust the pill from the third envelope. Let's see why. The first message of the first envelope is true, while the second is false. Both messages from the second envelope are true. This leaves us with two false statements on the third envelope. Timothy and Diana were strolling in a magic forest together when they ran into an evil witch. The witch captured Diana and took her to a haunted castle. Timothy managed to find the hidden castle and watched as the witch turned Diana into a frog. When the witch left the room, he snuck inside to turn Diana back into human form. He found a spell book that could help him and found out the recipe for the magic potion he had to make. He recognized most of the ingredients, but the last two were encrypted. Take a look at the witch's ingredient cabinet and try to help Timothy discover the last two ingredients he needs to make the magic potion. You 
got it! That's exactly what he needs! The day started busy in Favortown. The police station got a call saying an undercover vampire was passing as a teacher at Middle Moon Elementary School. The officer went down there to check and found three possible suspects. Take a look at them and see if you can guess who the vampire is. It's the one in the middle. She's wearing sunglasses inside the cafeteria and drinking a very suspicious red drink. Yikes! Eric was coming home from a night out. As he reached the gate of his apartment, he heard the sound of someone bawling. He looked around, but no one was there. That's when he noticed something that scared him, and he shouted, Ghosts! Ghosts! Someone help me! Look at the image. Can you identify what Eric saw that scared him so much? The gate lamp isn't attached to the pole. It's floating in the air and somehow still shining bright. Well, this isn't right. Then Eric called his best friend, who also happened to be a renowned ghost hunter. That's convenient. His buddy Ray arrives, and his ghost watch immediately starts beeping. It leads them to the building's pool. At the pool, they see a girl swimming. Eric shouts, Hey, why are you swimming in the pool so late at night? Here, let me help you get out. But Ray stops him, saying, Don't do that! Why did Ray do it? Look at the pool. The girl is swimming, but there is no movement in the water. She must be a ghost. On the other side of town, Bobby is also ghost hunting. He called his friend Susan to visit the town's old creepy hotel and bust some ghosts. As they arrive, they find clear signs of ghost activity. It looked like that ghost had a sense of humor, though, and wanted to play hide-and-seek with them. The ghost led Bobby and Susan into a room with four doors. Each door had an inscription on it with clues to where the ghost might be hiding. The sign on door A says, It's behind B or C. The sign behind door B says, It's behind A or D. Door C says, It's in here. And door D claims, The ghost isn't here. Bobby and Susan looked very confused until a note appeared next to their feet saying, Three of the inscriptions are false and one is true. Can you guess which door led to the ghost? Let's see how this would work. If the ghost was behind door A, then both B and D would be true. But if it was behind door B, then both A and D would be true. If the ghost was behind door C, then A, C, and D are all true. But if the ghost was behind door D, then the statements on all the other doors were false, except for that on door B. This matched the rules, so it was behind door D. To get into the best Halloween party in town, Becky had to solve a difficult riddle. There were two hourglasses in front of her. One hourglass measures 7 minutes, and the other measures 4 minutes. She needed to time 9 minutes using both hourglasses. How could she do it? First, she turned both hourglasses at the same time. By the time the 4-minute glass finished, there were still 3 minutes left on the other one. She flipped the 4-minute glass again. By the time the 7-minute glass was empty, there was 1 minute left on the other glass. And by the time the 4-minute glass emptied again, there was 1 minute's worth of sand in the bottom half of the 7-minute timer. She flipped it over again, so there's 1 minute's worth of sand on the top of the glass. And when the 7-minute timer finally emptied again, 9 minutes elapsed in total. Whew, that took some work. Jessica was on a trip to the desert when she got separated from her group. She noticed a sandstorm was coming her way. She had three options for what to do. She could try to run away from the sandstorm. 
she could hide behind a big rock. Or she could try hiding in the desert's dry riverbed. Which one is Jessica's best option? Well, the first option is a terrible idea, as she will never run faster than a sandstorm. The riverbed is also not such a good idea, as it's too low, and the sand from the storm can fill the entire hole in no time. Her best option would be to hide behind a big rock. After the storm passed, Jessica used the radio to send an SOS signal to the guide. The guide told her to sit tight. A rescue team would shortly be on its way to help her. In a few hours, three rescue teams came to help Jessica. She got suspicious and asked all the teams who had sent them. The first team said that they had heard the news on the radio that a woman was lost in the desert and came quickly to aid her. The second team said that the hotel she was staying in called the police for help. The last team said they received a radio call saying a woman was in distress and quickly came to help. Which rescue team should she trust? the last team. Jessica sent a message to her guide as soon as the storm was over, remember? Hello there, Brightsiders! These riddles are going to be a bit different than usual. No witches, detectives, or whatever. Let's go! Take a look at this pic. On the left, you've got a set of words. They're not linked to each other in any way. On the right, you've got a set of weirdly shaped geometrical objects. Your task is to match each word to the corresponding object. Alrighty, let's see the answers. Voila! Let me break it down for you. It's necessary to look for external similarities between words and pictures. This is called word recognition. We recognize words as a whole, not by individual letters. Easier to spot spelling errors. That's why we can read abbreviations. We recognize familiar words even if letters are missing. Next one. You gotta use your math skills here. So, in front of you lies a whole treasure. 10 bags, each of which contains 1,000 coins. 9 sacks contain real gold coins, and one contains extremely fake ones. A real gold coin weighs 5 grams, while a fake one weighs 4 grams. How to determine in one weighing on the scales which of the bags contains fake coins? The scales are accurate, but there is only one approach to them. Here's the right approach. We take one coin from the first bag, two from the second, three from the third, and so on, up to 10 coins. Weigh these 55 coins. Gold coins could weigh 275 grams. If one gram is missing, then fake coins are in the first bag. If two grams are missing, then fake coins are in the second bag, and so on. It's curious that this task is easily scalable. The number of bags is not important. At least three, at least a thousand, everything is solved by one weighing. This riddle got pretty viral on TikTok, but in case you missed it, you can try to solve it right now. He claims that according to the FBI, if you solve this riddle, you're smart enough to become a special agent. So, a man and a woman go out to dinner on their first date. The evening is very hot, and they bring water with ice. The woman is terribly thirsty, and she drinks three glasses in one gulp. A man drinks one glass in small sips throughout the evening. Later, he writes to her that he suddenly became ill, weakness, dizziness, breathing problems, at midnight, he passes away. The police call the woman in for questioning and announce that there was poison in her glass and in the man's glass. It was poison, so why did the man get poisoned and the woman not? I'm sure you already guessed the poison was in the ice. The woman drank so fast that the ice cubes had no time to melt, so the poison had no effect on her. The man drank slowly, and the ice melted, so he swallowed poisonous water. I guess pretty much any brightsider can become a special agent. Now, look at this picture. 
Keep in mind that it's not that simple, and only 1% of people can figure out what's wrong with this image. Hey, look closer! The woman in the red dress on the right doesn't have an umbrella, but she doesn't get wet. Two coins are worth 30 cents. One of them is not 5 cents. What are these coins? This one was easy. 25 cents and 5 cents. One coin is not 5 cents, but the second is 5 cents. Look at this picture closely, because the riddle is all about your attention. Now tell me, what time is in the picture? To make it a little bit easier, I'm going to give you a couple of options. A. It's 5 a.m. B. It's 11 a.m. C. It's 7 a.m. Take a look at the long shadows and the snow lying on the cars and the burning lanterns. Well, I guess it's 7 o'clock in the morning in the picture. Look at the picture. Do you spot anything weird here? The shipping deck seems to be way too slim. Seems like it was built after the ship had arrived at the port. Allison is quite a picky eater. She likes grapes, but she can't stand peaches. She's into squash, but she never eats carrots. So now you have to figure out what Allison prefers, pumpkins or apples. This girl may be finicky, but she does have some logic. She only eats things that grow on vines, so she's going to prefer pumpkins over apples. There's a clerk at the butcher shop. He's 6 feet tall, and he wears size 13 sneakers. What does he weigh? Of course, it's meat. There's a word in the English language in which the first two letters signify a male. The first three letters signify a female. The first four letters signify a great man. And the whole word means a great woman. Can you guess this word? It's the word heroin. A hen and a half lays an egg and a half in a day and a half. How many eggs does one hen lay in one day? Yeah, it's pretty hard to think of a hen and a half. As for an egg and a half, I can only imagine it in a cooked form. One and a half days is the easiest criterion here. So, with all the given information, it must be that one hen would lay one egg in the same time period. One and a half days. But if one hen lays one egg in one and a half days, it means that one hen would lay only two-thirds of an egg in one day. So the answer is two-thirds of an egg. A young man wants to have it, but when he grows up, he no longer wants it. He attacks it with a blade in his hands, but it's always in vain. What is it? It's a beard! Hey, I've got a riddle rhyme for you. I'm rather large and usually majestic. I'm every hue of the rainbow. I can eat you. I may heat you. You only wish you could see me. What am I? It's a dragon. The last but not the least. Get ready. This one's going to be pretty long. Carl's two grandmothers want to see him every weekend, but they live on the opposite sides of town. Not to offend any of the grannies, he tells them that every Sunday, he'll head to the subway station nearest to his apartment at a random time of the day and will hop on the next train that arrives. If it happens to be the train traveling north, he'll visit his grandma Erica uptown. And if it happens to be the train traveling south, he'll visit his grandma Liz downtown. Both of his grandmothers are okay with this plan, since they both know the northbound and southbound trains run every 20 minutes. 
But after a few months of doing this, Grandma Liz complains that she sees him only one out of five Sundays. Carl claims he chooses a random time each day. How can this be? Keep in mind that the trains always arrive at their scheduled times. Although both trains come exactly every 20 minutes, the timing matters a lot. Let's imagine the northbound train comes on the hour, on the 20, and on the 40. So at 8, 8.20, 8.40, 9, etc. Now let's suppose the southbound train comes on the 4, 24, and 44. So 8.04, 8.24, 8.44, 9.04, etc. This means in any hour, there will be only 12 minutes in which the southbound train will be the next train to arrive. So, if Carl arrives between 8 and 8.04, between 8.20 and 8.24, or between 8.40 and 8.44, he'll get on the southbound train. Otherwise, he'll get on the northbound train. But as Carl always comes at a random time, and the southbound train supposedly arrives after the northbound trains, Carl gets to see his grandma Liz pretty rarely. Are you ready to challenge your visual memory? These puzzles will definitely make your brain sweat. Take a look at this picture and try to memorize each object. Okay, the time is up. Can you sort the extra object out? These scissors don't belong here. Let's make the task a little harder. Take your time to memorize these staplers. And now let's see if you can spot which object didn't appear in the initial picture. Option C is new. The next one. Try to memorize these donuts. Great. I'm sure you remember them all by heart, and you'll have no problem sorting the odd one out. Option A doesn't belong here. Here comes the next set. Try to memorize all the details. Okay, which ice cream didn't appear in the initial picture? B. You'll need to stretch your photographic memory to the limits if you want to solve the next task. Here are six different burgers. Pay attention to all the details. You're going to need them later. And now let's take a look at these nine pictures. Can you spot which of these burgers didn't appear in the initial picture? Ready to see the answer? B, D, and E. The next one. Try to memorize all six rings. Good. Can you sort the three extra rings out? Options A, C, and F don't belong here. Take a look at this picture and try to memorize each parrot. The time is up. Can you spot the parrots that were not present in the original picture? B, E, and F. And now let's go ahead and study the following images. Great job. I'm sure you remember every flower. Let's see if you can find them among these 20 flowers. 1, 7, 9, 15, 16, and 19. The next task is the same. Do your best to memorize all six mugs. Okay, can you spot them among this variety? Ready to see the correct answer? Here they are. How about a task change? Study these six objects very carefully. Ready? And now let's hide them and try to remember where this object was. Over here. Was it too easy? Let's complicate the puzzle a little. You have a few seconds to memorize these 10 objects. Great, can you recall where this image was? It was here. And what if we increase the number of objects to 12? Ready to try? Can you spot this object's location? There it is. 
Here's the next group of objects. Try to memorize them all. And now let's hide them and swap their places. Can you restore the original sequence in which the objects were placed? Ready to see the answer? There you go. Ready to try again? Here's a group of objects. You know what to do. Let's see if you can restore the original sequence this time. Here's the correct order. Can you handle eight objects? Let's check. Here's the initial sequence. Take your time to memorize it. All right, let's rearrange the images. Can you bring them back to order? This is what the original sequence looked like. Anna arrives at an empty parking lot. Can you guess the number of the place where her car is parked? To make the task easier, we should turn the picture upside down. And now it's obvious that the correct answer is 87. Miranda is a very rich woman. She lives in a fancy circular mansion with diamond chandeliers in every room. She also has a diamond table, a movie theater room, a spa room, and a huge garage with five antique cars. But today Miranda is very upset. She has just found out that one of her cars is missing. She asks the butler, but he says he was making her bed. Miranda questions the maid and she says, I was dusting corners. And the chef says, I didn't touch your car. I was making breakfast. Who's lying? The maid. Miranda lives in a circular house, remember? So the maid couldn't be dusting corners. I can be cracked. I can be made. I can be told. I can be played. What am I? I'm a joke. Toby and Bobby decide to prank their English teacher. They succeed, but the teacher wants revenge. He detains them and takes the students to the basement. Teacher, you'll stay here until you solve my riddle. Make one word from the following letters. Toby and Bobby spend seven hours there, and finally, they solve the riddle, and the teacher lets them go. How did they do that? The answer is literally one word. Rose is riding a bike. Suddenly, someone throws a cup of strawberry milkshake in her face. She loses her balance and falls. Rose looks around, finds three suspects, and interrogates them. But each person swears to have nothing to do with the prank. Bianca says, I was just doing my daily workout. I'm on a sugar-free diet, so I would never have bought this disgusting milkshake. Nick says, I was reading a book and enjoying my own milkshake, but I like chocolate, not strawberry. And Lauren says, I was just walking my dog and I didn't look at the road. Who's lying? Lauren, take a look at her bright purple lipstick. There's a similar mark on the cup that was thrown at Rose. Zelda finds a recipe in her granny's old cookbook, but unfortunately the last ingredient is encoded. Here's a hint to crack it. Although I may have eyes, I cannot see. I have a round face with lots of acne. What am I? Any idea what it might be? It's a potato. Four criminals are planning to rob a bank. They agree to only take the gold bars. They return home and decide to divide the bar among themselves. Can you find a way to separate this shape into four equal parts? Here's the easiest way. Liam gets a spooky invitation to a Halloween party. He comes along and sees something creepy right away. All the guests are vampires except one. Can you spot a human?
Take a closer look at the lady in a witchy costume. She's the only one who has round pupils like a normal human being. Someone stole the most expensive painting from the local art gallery. The police arrive at the crime scene and pull some fingerprints. They identify three different people. Two of them are trusted employees of the gallery, but the third fingerprint belongs to an unknown person who might be the robber. The detective suspects four criminals specializing in art thefts. He finds their fingerprints in his database and compares them with the ones from the crime scene. The detective identifies the robber right away. What about you? Can you guess who stole the painting? These fingerprints belong to the gallery employees. So here's the robber. Cherry and Sam spend their honeymoon at a fancy resort. Can you spot any mistakes in this place? The pool is frozen. Bob is having dinner and watching TV after work as usual. But can you spot anything odd in this picture? The mirror reflects a different TV program. There are three different yachts to choose from. Which one should Jake pick? The second yacht has no lifeboats or jackets. It's dangerous to sail like that. As for the third boat, there's a tied up man on board. And this sailor is a ghost. So only the first yacht seems safe and reliable. Kendra, Stacy, and Monica are besties, but in fact one of them is a bad friend. Can you guess who? Monica. She left an ice cream stain on her friend's coat on purpose. Ryan wants to surprise his wife. He calls the local flower shop and orders a huge bouquet of daisies. An hour later someone knocks on Ryan's door. He looks through the peephole first and says, Oh wow, a fake delivery guy has arrived. How did he know? The delivery guy didn't know that Ryan had ordered daisies, and he brought roses instead. The next puzzle will test your visual memory. We're going to show you a couple of images. Try to memorize them as best you can. All right, time is up. And now let's see if you can find the mug that you saw at the beginning. B. What about the ice cream? A. And finally, can you spot the original cat? Option D is correct. Here's the next set of images. You know what to do. Are you ready to spot the butterfly? Option C is correct. What about the gnome? D. Can you find the initial candle? B. And what about the comb? It's over here. And now try to memorize these images. Let's check if you can find the glove that you saw at the beginning. Option D is correct. What about the phone? It's over here. Can you find the original pencil? A. And what about the broccoli? It's over here. 
Can you spot the shoe? B. Nina's brother decides to prank her and changes a six-letter password on her laptop. He leaves a little clue in Nina's room so that she could crack the code. Can you help her? To solve this riddle, we should take a look at the calendar on the wall. The marked dates imply a number sequence, 6, 12, 15, 24, 5, and 18. But the password should contain six letters, not numbers. We need to find the corresponding letter in the alphabet. 6 for F, 12 for L, 15 for O, and so on. And the final password is flower. Alex is going to the Moroccan desert. Alex decides to go explore the local market. He wanders around and a stranger approaches him. Stranger. Hey, mister. Would you like to buy these ancient statues? I found them in a tomb. They're thousands of years old. Alex gets very interested. He loves history. He takes a closer look at the statues and gets mad. Alex. Your statutes are fake. How did he know? The first statue is holding a phone. The second has the hieroglyph of a bicycle. The third statue also can't be that old. Back then no one knew what the earth looked like. And the fourth statue is wearing sneakers. Busted. Robert is a professional thief. He knows that Mrs. Gold is hiding a diamond necklace in her safe. But now he fails to crack the required eight number code. What about you? Let's take a closer look at the paintings. See these dominoes? It's a clue. They form the code 3, 2, 1, 5, 6, 1, 2, 4. Steven is building a new house for his family. He's visiting the construction site to check how the builders are doing. Steven finds out that someone has broken an expensive antique mirror. Only three people had access to the house. Steven questions all of them. The supervisor says, I was feeling sick yesterday, so I went home earlier to get some rest. The interior designer says, Yesterday the mirror was fine. I arrived here in the evening to take some pictures for my design project. See for yourself if you don't believe me. And the mover says, I wasn't here yesterday, I spent the entire day at the construction supermarket. So I don't know who did it. Who's lying? The designer. There's a selfie among the pictures that she took yesterday. Take a look at her glasses. They reflect the opposite wall in the broken mirror. Busted.